hiding in plain sight for the last few weeks at the time of recording this has been the Rain Performer, the latest Serato DJ controller from Rain, which is the Rain 4, but with motorized platters, better up faders, oh, and the word Performer on the back. So get good, get out there, make the moments, and I'll see you for another video very soon. Only joking. But they are the main differences. And the reason I say it's been hiding in plain sight is we've literally had this on the desk here for the last week or so. And we just haven't been talking about it because it wasn't released until then. So go figure. They were happy for us to have it on the desk. They just didn't want us to talk about it. So now you're getting a good look at it. And now we're talking about it as well. But it's true that if you own this unit here, there's not an awful lot extra that I can tell you about the one that I've got on the desk. This is the Rain 4 that came before it. It looks very similar. That's because it is very similar, apart from the things I've told you that are different. But some of those are quite meaningful. And now you've got a choice to make, for instance, not only between this and this one here, but also between the Rain 4 and things like the Red 7 uh, and indeed the Rain 1. So let's talk through all of that in this lesson. So let's first just have a little recap about what the Rain 4 and now, of course, the Rain Performer actually are. What are these controllers? Who are they for? Well, these are top of the range Serato controllers. Serato DJ software has often been used by hip hop and open format DJs. And this is a performance controller for showing off your skills with, really. It's got the layout that makes it very easy to access the up faders and the cross fader down here, but at the same time, control the effects. It's got effects paddles, and it's got pads, which have got OLED displays underneath them to make it easy to see what you've got set. It's got unrivaled control over stems with stems split, and also with stems EQs, you can control the volumes of each of the individual stems in your mix, the bass, the melody, the vocals, and the drums. And overall, it's just a very high quality unit. Around the back, you get inputs for two external inputs as well. So you could plug DVS in here. You can also plug external decks in here. You've got two inputs for computers. You've also got a proper IEC cable, no external power brick or anything like that. And being a rain unit, you get an awful lot of built-in hardware effects as well as full control over Serato's internal effects although the jury's out on how well it will control the new serato effects that are coming in the next version of serato as we present this to you so as always things move on it remains to be seen what happens there so let's talk about the big differences and the big differences can be summed up as i said at the beginning in three ways one the platters two the new faders and three the new effects of which there are a few to talk about so let's start off then with the most obvious place which is the new platters so these are motorized and what that means is that we get a high torque motor underneath this seven inch platter it's got real vinyl on it here this is magnetized so it sticks on and removes from the underside and you can see the jog wheel is built into the middle here you get these slip discs here which you can add to it and they, they provide you with all types so that you can pick the ones that have got the feel that works for you and it magnetizes back onto there as i just showed you with this internal display which is of course very similar to the technology we first saw that was like this on the pioneer dj rev 7 another controller for serato with motorized platters however now we have a take on that idea here from rain so they feel great. The motors are high torque, the vinyl is very convincing, and the internal displays are awesome. They've got, as you can see, the artwork showing here with the, with the waveform underneath it and a few bits of other information, such as the time left, the looping, uh, and so on. At the top here, we've got the BPM, but I can change that by pressing the shift button and pressing these buttons at the top here, the display mode button. I can move to this display here, which is showing me the other deck but also the full wave view view for view of this deck and then i can switch to the next one which will show me the kind of traditional serato view you can turn the marker on or off here so you can put a marker onto the actual vinyl itself that should provide you a few in the sticker selection that comes with the unit if you prefer to have a physical marker on the vinyl and overall this screen is really useful not least because if you're looking through your library then you can get your library to show on here as well, which I don't think I've ever seen on a controller before. And that is super useful because what that means is that it's, it's quite likely you won't have to look at your DJ laptop screen 
as you are playing your set because as long as you've got your set organized properly and as long as you've got your tracks in a playlist and you know roughly where they are you can move through the playlist here although you can even move back uh, using the back button here and then you can look through everything on the unit here as well which is uh, again pretty cool so good good display good feel good high torque overall this is if you wanted motorized platters this is definitely the selling point of the rain performer over the rain four for you there's no surprise they're good of course in music the company that owns rain has got a lot of experience in making excellent motorized platters for units it makes of course the rain 12 and the rain one but also going back in time there have been many other units like the newmark ns units ns7 units that also had this similar technology and so you can rest assured that they're going to be reliable and that they are convincing in feel and so on right they do make the unit a lot heavier so that's something to weigh up if you're thinking about this against the rain 4 in the menu item for the display on this tiny little oled screen in the middle you can change the needle marker as i was saying but also day mode which is really cool so i can turn day mode on in here which means that on the platters now we get this much brighter mode which means that when i'm looking through my library and so on which is so bright you, can, you can't actually see that on the camera this is for daylight this is why it's so bright in the dark studio here because this is made for if you're djing outdoors when screens famously just tend to disappear you know if you ever try to read something small on your iphone wandering down the street you'll know what i mean so day mode on there is a nice addition for those kinds of gigs let's move on to look at the effects this is the other place where stuff has meaningfully changed and so the effects on the old rain 4 were pretty good they had kind of 22 or something effects which were very good hardware effects which means you could use them on anything you plug into the unit as well it does control serato software effects just like the rain 4 before it but they've got some effects in here, which is fader effects, which means that they're going to work on these faders here. And this is pretty cool because there's something that will interest DJs looking to put something extra into their performance uh, and get people scratching their heads and saying, how did they do that? So as ever, the effects, the hardware effects here work by pressing these buttons here. You have six and they can all be changed from the echo recycler scale reverb matrix and echo out that are currently dialed in. So here is some of the new ones which work with the faders that I wanna show you. So I'm gonna hold down this button here and I'm gonna turn this effects knob here to go to the new effects. And the one I'm gonna start with is the fader filter here. So by pressing this, it will select fader filter on this button. And so that's now switching on and off. So now on this channel here, I can control the fader using the up fader, or the filter using the up fader. Start a track playing there then. So at the moment, there's nothing different. This fader is controlling my volume. If I turn on the effect I just set, it says fader filter. Now this no longer works. This is now doing nothing because I've engaged it, but it's not actually turned on using the paddle. So let's, uh, let's engage it using the paddle. And I'm getting that low pass filter now. controlled using the up fader now i can change the low pass to uh, another one there's band pass and high pass and the way i do that is by turning the parameter knob as you will with any other effect there are other effects here of varying use let's have a little look at a couple of the fader effects that are added in addition to that one then i'm going to hold down this one i'm going to switch to fader pitch and press the button that's now set to fader pitch so let's start the music playing again so i had the scale set to up i was changing major and minor scales there and you can set that to down as well so you have a pitch control there let's try another one this time we will move to uh, the ring modulator On all of these, the depth control will decide, as it does normally, how much depth you get on the effect that you've chosen. So ring modulator gives you that kind of lo-fi overdrive sound. And finally, 
the well, in fact there's two more there's uh, there's tone as well so let's look at roll first you can have a filter on or off with the roll here that can be adjusted using this Now tone's an interesting one because it literally gives you a sine wave or a sawtooth that you can play. You can set the starting key here and you can play it like this. I'm sure someone will come up with a creative use for that. That person is not going to be me. And that's about it. That is what's new on the Rain Performer. Go and look at our Rain 4 review if you're not familiar with some of the other features that are on here because I'm not going to go through them all again. But as I said at the beginning, it's a very high-end Performer Creative Focused Serato controller. So should you buy it? Well, that depends. If you want motorized jog wheels, if you like the idea of the up fader effects, and especially if you like the idea of having higher quality up faders, it was one of the things that people didn't like, one of the few things people didn't like about the original Rain 4, then you are likely to prefer this one. It's heavier. The motorized platters, of course, make it more expensive. But again, if you're a scratch DJ, if you're someone who appreciates having a motorized platter, and it's something you've always thought was missing from the Rain 4, it was one of the criticisms of the Rain 4, because Rain has just always been associated with turntablism and with using moving platters, I guess. And it was a bit of a uh, an eyebrow raiser when they released a unit that didn't have these. Well, look, now they've released one that does. So against the Rain 4, uh, unless you care about those things, probably not worth going for. Yes, the in-jog displays are nice, but I wouldn't say that they are particularly gonna change an awful lot about the way you DJ. I mean, it's true that having this, having the ability to go through your library, does mean that you're looking less and less at the Serato screen, which of course begs the question, when are we gonna get a controller with this kind of control over the music that doesn't need a laptop at all? Come on, let's have a motorized controller with all these bells and whistles. I know you can do it, someone. So that's compared to the Rain 4. What about other units then? Well, compared to something like the Pioneer DJ Rev 7, which was the first unit to have these kind of in-jog displays, this is in a way a bit more conventional. The Rev 7 is a more scratch focused unit. The internal uh, section of the Rev 7 where the mixer lives is very much like a Pioneer DJM S mixer for scratching. Uh, and that means it's laid out in that way that this one isn't. So this is kind of more of a hybrid between a DJ controller and something that you can perform and scratch on. I'd say this is probably more open format than scratch, although it does have the high quality faders and so on. So if you are moving towards a two channel scratch controller, the Pioneer might be better. If you're more moving towards the kind of Red Bull 3 style and the new look DMC type performances, open format, this might be the better one for you. And then of course, this controller, as as with the Rain 4 before it, majors on stems. Serato's stems, Serato's ability to separate the vocals and the drums and the melodies and the bass lines in real time are really, really good. And this controller maximizes that. So without going into too much detail, because again, it's the same as you get on the Rain 4, you can quickly split the music and the acapella across two decks so that you can play with them that way. You can use the EQs to control the volume and various other bits and pieces as well, which is all really good. But it's no longer arguably the best stems control out there. And that probably goes for the Pioneer DJ Flex 10. Now the Flex 10 has got a lot of caveats. Uh, it's record box software, which is the best software to use it with, has got horrible stems at the time of recording this. They sound horrible. Uh, but you can use Serato with that unit there's a compromise involved. The controls aren't all labeled quite right. It forces you to use Serato in three stems rather than four stems mode where you can't separate the bass line from the music if you want to do what I'm about to talk about. And what I'm about to talk about, which makes the stems arguably on the Pioneer DJ Flex 10 better, at least as far as features goes, is that they have a really cool feature where you can put the stems through the effects and only choose like say the vocal or the bass or the drums or whatever and have everything else go clean. So you could have a track playing and you could decide you want to stick a gate over the vocal for instance, a transform effect over the vocal. You can do that on the Flex 10. And you, you can do that on here across two decks and with a bit of messing, but it's far, far easier on the Flex 10. So arguably, 
that's something that is missing here. So if you really are fully bought into stems, you might just want to take a cursory look at the Flex 10, but it will probably, honestly, turn out to be a cursory look because there's so many disadvantages to using that unit with Serato. Right, and what about the Pioneer, sorry, the, uh, the Rain 1, which was the original controller with motorized jogs for Serato, a two-channel scratch controller. The Rain 1 doesn't have the nice jog wheels, doesn't have anywhere near the control here over a lot of the other features like stems, doesn't have anywhere near the control here and all this cool stuff on effects. However, it's smaller, it's simpler, and if all you want is a two-channel motorized controller for Serato that can do pretty much everything at a push, uh, although you won't get the kind of depth of control that you've got here, you might be better off with the Rain 1. The biggest decision here is, do I want motorized jog wheels or not? And a lot of people really aren't sure. They kind of feel like they want them, but when it comes to it, they might not. I mean, the thing with the motorized jog wheels is, uh, you sometimes you can't turn them off. Now in this unit, you can turn them off. So, you know, this is motorized. If I press the motor button here with the shift button, I can turn that off. So it'll still play, but it's not going around anymore. However, I lose the ability to turn this scratch control here. I don't get it when I'm playing at all. So they don't work like normal jog wheels when you've turned the motor off. So if you're thinking, oh, I'll buy this, but I'll just turn the motor off when I don't want to use it. You maybe want to think again about that because it's not quite as straightforward. Now it does have something called Silent Q. I won't go into what Silent Q, uh, how it works, but basically Silent Q does make it a bit easier to DJ if you've got motorized platters that have a startup speed and you want to get them to start bang on the beat and all that kind of stuff. However, they do take some getting used to. And if you've never used motorized platters, but you kind of think you should, but you're happy with normal jog wheels, think very carefully about it. These are going to be more for people that really like that feel of the platter pulling away under their fingers when they're DJing, maybe because, well, usually because they've used vinyl in the past. So that is the Rain Performer. It's brand new, $2,000. It's out today at the time that I'm recording this, and I hope I've given you everything you need to decide really the biggest decision whether you're going to go for the original Rain 4 or for this one here. Motorized, better up faders and some pretty out there control over effects which aren't on the Rain 4 but apart from that it's pretty much game as usual with this unit. I hope you've enjoyed this. Do let us know underneath any questions, comments you have or feedback about this. Meanwhile for me, fill in the studio. Get good, get out there, make the moments and I'll see you again very soon.